I, I will talk about the main difference between Scilab and MATLAB. Just to recall that uh, the, both Scilab and, and MATLAB started in the 80. So uh, both languages have same philosophy and uh, both are, the language are very similar. From this date, Scilab and Psychos have evolved in, independently of MATLAB and Simulink. So there is many differences that has appeared. In the last year, we try to make them more um, converge when it is possible, in part, but in trying to, to get to, to keep the Scilab good points. One of the main differences is the, the way the functions are handled in Scilab and MATLAB. In MATLAB, functions may be defined using M files, so you have to write files on your computer which contain the code of the function. And this M file, if they are in a given pass, are automatically loaded in MATLAB. When at the prompt time, all the functions which have been modified are automatically re reloaded in the software. And uh, the functions which are loaded this way are stored in a special scope. In Scilab, the function may, may be defined directly in the language. And uh, for this reason, the function keyword, which, be, be, which began the, the, which marks the beginning of the function, should be end by an end function which marks the end. This is not the case in, in MATLAB. And typically, function may be loaded at demand. So you can explicitly load the function into Scilab. But it is also possible to create libraries which allow, which resemble to the path of MATLAB, but which allow the function to be loaded automatically when requested. But the function, if you modify the function in one of these libraries, it is not automatically reloaded. So you have to use the function genlib to update the library. And for example, here I have put a little example on the way a function can be defined in Scilab. It resembles the MATLAB way, but here you have the end function, which is used to mark. And this kind of uh, instruction can be directly entered into the Scilab console. It's not useful to, to write them into a uh, file and then make the file known by the system. There's also differences for the function behavior. As I said before, in, in MATLAB, the functions are, are stored in a special scope. And uh, consequently, it is not possible to, man to manipulate them as variable. For example, it's not possible to make a copy of a function or, or derive a function from, the, from another one. There is a function which in, in MATLAB function which is named inline, which allows to create very small function in, in the, the main scope. For the, the scripts are more or less seen as a function and can be run just typing the name of the file without the, the .m extension. In Scilab, the functions are stored in the main scope as other variables like matrices. And all functions may be defined in line and also functions can be nested so you can define a function within an, another function. Consequently, as functions are variable as, as other, when you, tap the, when you type the name of a function, in fact, you, you refer to the function, you are not calling it, as in MATLAB. So if you want to call a function without argument, you, you have to, to add the parenthesis, an empty calling sequence with op opening and closing parenthesis. And the script file should be run using the exact keyword, exec of a file or exec of an in inline script. And also, as a consequence of the fact that functions are variable as others, function and built-in can be passed as an argument of other function, input or output arguments. So here, I create, I will create a function, or maybe I have to put larger fonts. Mm -hmm.
I will copy this function here. Yeah, I, I have create, created a function which is named diff, and which takes two or three arguments. The first is a function, the second is a number or a vector, and the third optional is a, a scalar. Here I test if the third argument is present, and then I compute the finite uh, the finite difference of the function to estimate the differentiation, the, the derivative. Then I, I can call this function this way. Here sign is a, is a built-in. I can, for example, make a scalar function. Oh. And I can differentiate it. This function should re answer one. And so here I, I compute the difference for a vector which is zero to five by step of one, and I get near zero value for every, va for every number. So it works also for a function. Now, if I look at the function which are defined here, so I get that d, the, 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 the vector I, I compute here, which is the vector of constant number of size six, and d, which is a function. So both are in the, in the scope, current scope. Now I re redefine the d function to put one in it. And if I look at <coughs> variable who are named D, now diff has been changed here to a number. So I redefine it. For the, there is also differences on the variable, the scope of the variable within functions. In MATLAB, within a function, only the variables which are locally defined in the functions are known. You can also declare some variable explicitly as global, so many functions can share it. Also, the main, the, the, the top level can share this, this function, this variable, but you, can, you, you must declare them global anywhere you want to use them. In Scilab, it is also possible to refer to variables which are in the calling scope. Here, for example, I create this small function foo, which compute y given n, and inside foo I define z equal five and y equal a plus z to the power n. A is, un is not defined in this function, but if I define a and b here and I call foo, when foo is executed, the value of a is, t is taken here in the main scope. So you have the scope of foo, which contains the variable n, z, and y, and the main scope will contain the foo, the function itself, the a variable, and the b variable. Another kind of difference is the semantic of basic function. There is a lot of functions, so I, 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 have, I won't uh, check all of them, but only the basic, the basic one, those which are um, um, very oftenly used. So there is two families of basic fun function who pose problem in the, um, when you go from MATLAB to Scilab. Is first family is the sum, prod, mean, and max family. In MATLAB, sum of A compute the row vector of the sum along the first non-singleton dimension of A. Oh, it's very complicated what it means. If I have a matrix here, which is a two by two matrix, and I ask some of, of this matrix, I get the vector four and six. And if I put a vector, here a row vector one, two, the result is three. In Scilab, we thought that this solution is not very good because a matrix during an algorithm may become a vector. So the semantic of the function changes during the algorithm. So we decided that sum of A will every time compute the sum of all elements contained in A. And to use the second semantic A of A of 
sum of A and I, which computes the sum along the ES dimension for both. This is in MATLAB and it is also in Scilab. <laughs> so this one has a constant semantic even for every shape of matrices. And it is true for this, all these functions. A second class of function who pose problem is the one, zero, round, and some other function. In MATLAB, you have this syntax, zero of M, which built a matrix of zero, full of zero of size M by M, and uh, zero of M, N, which built a, a matrix with M rows, N colon, and the same here for, <coughs> and if you want to build a matrix with that of zero, which has the same size of, of A, you have to write this, uh, this syntax, zero of size of A. Size of A return a vector, which is the dimension of the matrix A, and zero, then you apply this, this syntax. <coughs> In particular, this syntax is very, maybe useful for n-dimensional matrices. If you have matrices we, with a non-definite <coughs> number of, of dimension, it is quite difficult to use this kind of syntax. So this one is very useful. In Scilab, for historical reason, because at the beginning, MATLAB was uh, do the, the same. To, to build a matrix of zero, which has the same size of A, you can just enter zero of A, instead of zero of size of A. It is also possible to have this syntax, zero of M and N and so on, but this one is n cannot be used because it conflicts with this one. Another family of problem is the ordering of complex numbers. Here you know, I talk of the com comparison operator, the mean, max, and sort of functions. In MATLAB, depending on the, the function you have, this operation may work either on the real part, either on the, on the modulus of the complex numbers. For example, for, for the comparison, the comparison works on the real part. So if you enter this expression, one plus 10 f times a, i is uh, less than two, the, res the response is true. It's quite strange for people who are doing mathematics. <laughs> so in Scilab, we decided not to do the same and to generate an error. If somebody wants to compare this kind of number, Scilab generates an error. But it is possible for the user to define the function, to give a function which defines the mean of this operation, if you want. Here, I wrote this little function. Oops which give, me, give the MATLAB meaning to the comparison between a complex and a real number. Here I have this function. So for the name of the function, you have to see the overloading of Scilab. And here I just put that the result should be the real part compared to the real part of B. And if you have defined this function, the result is the same as MATLAB. But if you want to, to say that the comparison should be done, using uh, the modulus or, or the phase. It's up to you to, to define them. Uh, there is also now for some data types, for example, for string matrices. In MATLAB, you have two kinds of string matrices. The original one, one, which is the class char, which allows to define a column vector of character string. And this character string should be padded to the same length. For example, here I use S1 equal the character string MATLAB, semicolon, scilab, creates a, a, mate, uh, a vector of strings with two rows. The first row is MATLAB, the second is scilab, because MATLAB and scilab are the same, exactly the same length. And if I use this operator, I replace the colon, the, the semicolon by a comma, then the operation performed is the catenation of the two strings. It's not, you are not building a vector, a row vector of strings. The second solution is to use the cell array, which is a generic object which enable, which allow to put in a matrix way other datas. 
But here you have to use di different operators to construct matrix and to index them. For example, here, if you want to construct a row vector which contains the string x, y, z, and MATLAB, you have to use brackets instead of square. And to, if you want to get the first element of this vector, you have to use also here curly brackets. In Saya, there is a specific matri matrix type, data type for the strings. And so you, we, can, we can use the regular operator for matrix constructs and indexing. For example, here, I built T as a row vector, X and y, X, y, Z in Scilab, and T of one returns X, y, X, y, Z. And if I want to catenate the string, I use the, the plus operator. In, in Scilab to build high level object, one may use the, the Scilab built in M list and we, for compatibility with MATLAB, we have emulated the cell array, the MATLAB cell array using this, this data type. But due, due to this point, we'll probably change it in the time. In MATLAB, when you want to, to get the IG element of C, you have to, to use curly brackets. In Scilab, this can be done using regular parentheses for subcell indexing. And if you want to get the element itself in, in MATLAB, so in MATLAB you have to use C par parentheses and in Scilab parentheses followed by the entry field. Empty metrics are also handled differently. In MATLAB, which, which is probably the best solution, empty matrices is a matrix with that only which has at least one dimension equal to zero. So you, you may have empty matrix with zero rows and 10 columns. And, uh, and you have a coherent arithmetic which is supported with these empty matrices. For example, if I, if I call size of I of the empty matrix, I get a vector because I return, every time return a vector, um, a column vector. In this case, there is no eigenvalue, so the number of, of row is zero. But the number of column is still one because I is supposed to return a, a column vector. And if you build a, a, a vector which has two row and zero column, and you make the product x times X transpose, you will get a matrix, a 2 2 matrix filled with, with zeros. In Scilab, and for the, the same historical reason as before, there is only one empty matrix for all, all data types and all dimensions. So one empty matrix with dimension 0 by 0. And this is the same for string matrices or, or integer matrices or double. To be able to, um, to take into account all these differences, it's not so easy to translate MATLAB file to Scilab. For people who write, who write the MATLAB file, it's quite easy to do, to, to, to do the work manually because you, are, you know exactly what the program is doing. You know if a variable is a vector or a matrix. But if you have a code coming from elsewhere and you want to translate it, it's much more difficult because we have to know, oh, here, I apply sum to A. Ah, A, is it a matrix or is it a vector? It's not so easy. You have to look at the code. So we, we have tried to develop a, a MATLAB to Scilab translator, which is an, an help for people who want to translate a MATLAB file to Scilab. So the problem is uh, not only a syntax problem. You see that uh, in MATLAB, the comments are marked with a percent. In Scilab, it is double slash. So this can be easily replaced using a text editor. But for all the problem I mentioned before, it's not so easy. To, to be able to, to have an answer to the, the both problem, you have to perform type and uh, dimension infer inference to be able to, to have good, good code which is produced. But sometime when you want to call a function, the variable which are in the calling sequence, it is impossible to infer what is their, their type and their dimension. So to help the translator to, to produce good code, you may 
it's possible to add comments which give pragmas on the input argument. For example, it's possible to say, oh, this argument is a matrix which contain double precision numbers, or, or this, this one is the matrix which contain integer number, and it is the vector. So using these pragmas, the, the translator is able to generate a code which, resum which is quite clean. Without this pragma, the code uses a lot of emulation function to be sure that the, the function will run, but these emulation functions are, are slow because we are, it's functions which are written in Scilab, which try to emulate the, the behavior of the MATLAB functions. And this, if the translator is not able to, to know the type of the argument of, a, for example, of an operation, it will use ov overloading function to, to emulate the MATLAB behavior. The principle of the translator first, it, it make uh, some text addition to, for example, to change the comments and some other slight modification, textual modification, just to, be, to make Scilab able to read the code, the MATLAB code. So as the syntaxes are not so different, just a few modification of the initial syntax m make it possible to read the, the code in Scilab. After that, using the Scilab parser, you make a syntax, a syntax formal tree of the code, and this tree is then translated using the inference. And finally, this tree is used to regen regenerate a Scilab function code. Just a pretty print of the, of the code. As a result, the translator, for each M file, the translator produces the translated file, of course, tries to. <coughs> and it also produces the function, which is named psi underscore foo dot psi here, which is, which is used to translate the call to the foo function. So there is a sort of bootstrap. You can translate function recursively. Each function that is translated gives the way to translate the following one. And there is also a log file, which is generated where are indicated the missing functions, the function that the, the translator does not know in the function he has not translated. In this case, he put the function as they were in the initial code. The current state of this translator is today able to, to rule all the MATLAB syntax, all the operator, and most of the built-ins. The main weak point of the translator is the graphic user interface function and the advanced graphic function, which are not yet handled. And a lot of, uh, because in MATLAB there is thousands of functions, so all these functions written in MATLAB are not translated, of course, because, but it's possible to do so if you have the right to do so. Just one, two pages on Scilab and on Psychos and Simulink. So as Simulink Psychos includes a hierarchical block diagram editor, a compiler, a simulator, a C code generator, and all of this for, for modeling and simulating hybrid, hybrid dynamical system. But behind Psychos, there is a precise and well-defined semantic, which is an extension to the synchronous languages like Signal and Lustre to continuous time. And there is a, a clear cut between the continuous time and the discrete and event handling. And also, Psychos support physical level modeling based on modelica language. And the current Psychos weak points are the, the editor, which look and feel does not fit to the standard of the time. And also, there is no state flow equivalent in, in Psychos. And the last difference. Scilab is free of charge and open source, so there is no license problem, no cost problem. So yeah, I have finished.